Hi guys, I'm Farisha from Team Graduan and I'm proud to tell you that the Virtual Malaysian Career Fair is back this 26 to 28 March. Get ready to meet and interact with leading Malaysian employers from the comfort of your home. Here's how you can register to the Malaysian Career Fair and begin the hunt for your dream job. First of all, visit the malaysiancareerfair.co.uk and click Register Now on the top right corner. Fill in the necessary details. The red asterisk indicate compulsory fields. And this includes your resume. Let us know your top 6 preferred employers and click Confirm. Leading Malaysian employers can now view your resume and interact with you. Easy, wasn't it? You can even register through the Graduan app. Here's how. Just download the Graduan app on the Play Store or App Store. Click on the Events tab and click the Malaysian Career Fair. Fill in the details required. Once done, verify your email and complete the Graduan profile. Employees can't see your account if you don't complete your profile. It's that simple. Get online this 26 to 28 March to meet leading Malaysian employers. Change your life to meaningful careers today.
Hi guys, I'm Farisha from Team Graduan and I'm proud to tell you that the Virtual Malaysian Career Fair is back this 26 to 28 March. Get ready to meet and interact with leading Malaysian employers from the comfort of your home. Here's how you can register to the Malaysian Career Fair and begin the hunt for your dream job. First of all, visit the malaysiancareerfair.co.uk and click Register Now on the top right corner. Fill in the necessary details. The red asterisk indicate compulsory fields. And this includes your resume. Let us know your top 6 preferred employers and click Confirm. Leading Malaysian employers can now view your resume and interact with you. Easy, wasn't it? You can even register through the Graduan app. Here's how. Just download the Graduan app on the Play Store or App Store. Click on the Events tab and click the Malaysian Career Fair. Fill in the details required. Once done, verify your email and complete the Graduan profile. Employees can't see your account if you don't complete your profile. It's that simple. Get online this 26 to 28 March to meet leading Malaysian employers. Change your life to meaningful careers today. Welcome everyone to the first webinar of the day. I'm Yinwei, Executive in the UKE Careers Office, and I'll be your MC for this session. So for this webinar, we have with us the representatives from Maxis to tell us about the day in the life of being the head of delivery and innovations IT team at Maxis. The session will start off with a presentation followed by a Q&A. So throughout the session, if you have any questions, do put them in the chat box and our moderator will be addressing them during the Q&A session later. Additionally, if you are updating today's event on any of your social media accounts, be it Snapchat, Instagram, or even Facebook, do tag us at UKEC or at Gradon or hashtag CF2021 as we'd love to see them. So without further ado, I'll pass the floor over to Karina to start the session. Karina, over to you. Thank you, Yinwei. So hi, everyone. I'm Karina from Maxis Young Talent Team. And uh, first and foremost, I'd just, uh, I just like to uh, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I just hope during this one hour session, it will be a very informative and also a fruitful session for you. So if you if we are talking about Maxis, right, uh, you most probably know Maxis as just a telco company, but that's not completely right. So we actually in, are in the middle of a transformation journey to be a conferred solution provider. And a, with that, right, we aim to bring technologies to actually help people, to help businesses, to help society, to help government even. So, um, and here has been a key player in Nexus to actually bring those, uh, the best of those technologies to create impacts. So if you are interested to know what's her story and especially as the head of delivery and innovation. I'll just pass the floor to Anne to uh, talk and share more about her story. Over to you, Anne. Thank you, Karina. Let me share my screen. Wow. 
Hi, um, all my friends in the UK and uh, in Malaysia. Um, thank you, and I'm honored to be uh, part of this uh, uh, Malaysian Career Fair UK edition. Um, first of all, I would just like to um, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Anne. Um, I'm basically a software engineering graduate, uh, and my specialty has been in web development as well as uh, test automation and a uh, book that I like to read many, uh, mostly self-help, self-development. And the latest book that I've read so far is, um, the, the latest book that I've read is, uh, recently is uh, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. And I love music. I love classical music. I was a pianist. And I'm also doing a little, a little bit of music production. And I myself actually being very active in fitness as well recently. Okay. Um, I was born in Labuan. Uh, I moved to Alosta and I was growing up from, uh, in Alosta and then I moved to KL to pursue my career uh, as well as to study. And uh, in, 20, 000, uh, in 2004, I moved to Manchester to pursue my postgraduate study. And then um, two years later, I moved down to London um, to uh, pursue my career further. And uh, in total, I lived in the UK for nine and a half years. And then I moved back to KL back in um, December 2013 and until now, okay. Uh, since I moved back to KL, I have been joining two companies and Maxis is my second company. Um, and um, so my, my education, I was an MMU graduate uh, in, uh, in information system engineering. And, and when I did my postgraduate, I, I was in the University of Manchester and I, I did my uh, advanced in computer science, uh, master in science. All right. Um, my career progression, I had been a software developer. And uh, when I finished my postgraduate, I worked as a research associate in Manchester Computing. And um, then when I moved to London, I actually changed my career uh, path a little bit to become a QA engineer and then uh, in many testing role. And then later on, I progressed to become a manager and then now the head of uh, uh, delivery and innovation uh, in, in Maxis. So my role in Maxis, um, kind of like revolve around these three key areas. So basically I am a people manager. So on the day-to-day -day basis, I interact with my team. Um, I solve the problems that they have. They come and talk to me. I try to groom and grow them. Um, I try to inspire them to achieve what they want for themselves, okay? And um, I'm also a decision maker in areas like uh, designs, architectural design, technical solution, discussions. Uh, this is kind of like the things that I do day in, day out with my teammates in the project that's, uh, that's, uh, that I am involved, that I am involved in, okay? And I also plan and prioritize uh, protect, uh, pro portal-based uh, project roadmap uh, with uh, the product and the business stakeholders across the board. And, uh, and also kind of like look for ways to improve process and we are working intra and inter teams within the Max, uh, within Maxis uh, cross divisions as well. Okay. And apart from that, some of the key things that kind of like inspire me, uh, like aspire me to do more uh, day in day out as well is how do we actually, um, how do I use the knowledge that I have um, and the people skill that I have to look for a uh, way to push for things further. How can we enable the business more? Uh, my background has been software engineering, but uh, what can I do more uh, to help Maxis grow as a business? So therefore we always need to constantly look out for a way to innovate our, uh, our product. And therefore I need to look for ways to to, to make things interesting by adopting cutting edge technologies into the product solutioning and then on constant lookout to ideas um, and innovative, innovative ideas, just so we are able to constantly um, in, uh, you know, provide unmatched personalized experience to our customers. So what, what is Maxis and what do we do? Um, I think Karina has mentioned before, I mean, I mean mo most of us can all, 
most of us actually would like to think of, or maybe all that we can think of uh, for a telco company is to provide postpaid and prepaid services or maybe devices. But uh, this is no longer how uh, telco industry is going to sustain in the future. So if you look at this diagram, then it would kind of like tell you where we are moving towards with the Converse solution uh, that uh, Karina has mentioned before. Um, the business that we are in are no longer revolving around postpaid and prepaid uh, and devices. So what we are talking about here is how do we actually combine the power of digital uh, technology out there, IoT solutions, big data and artificial intelligence. So the products that we, we kind of like come up with and innovate around are based on these four key things. Uh, we are providing more and more of this kind of solutions to our customer just so we are no longer actually just look into just providing them the network that they need, but solutions that they need for their business. So there are many, many things uh, that happens every single day in Maxis. Every little small ideas would turn into something big. So one of the ones that I would like to mention and to talk about so proudly over here is um, the Maxis COVID-19 contact tracing application. So this project actually started back in April. Uh, last year, 2020, where there were a team of uh, 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 there were a team of guys in a digital COE team that we were talking about uh, contact tracing app within the building. Uh, how that idea come about is in Malaysia we do have a government application called My Sejatra that allows everyone to kind of like scan themselves in and check themselves in into and uh, in and out of the building. Uh, this is a way that the government is trying to do the contact tracing uh, to help them ease the, the spreading and just so they can also send out alerts to anyone that have come into contact to potential or uh, COVID positive uh, uh, patient. So, but this idea come about uh, because of due to the gap that we have identified in my, uh, my Sejatra app, Basically, how do you then track a, per a person that has actually walked into the building? So for example, in Manara Maxis, we are having many tenants. So what I mean by tenant is uh, Manara Maxis is not just a building that, uh, that, that, that uh, consists of uh, Maxis stuff. We are also having staff from other companies that are tenanted within the same building. So we are all actually sharing the same infrastructure, the lift, um, the entrance, um, some of the common areas. Uh, so how do we know that if let's say any of them were able to slip through this and got into the building and trace where, uh, what is their whereabout and uh, how do you protect your own employees uh, uh, within Maxis? So this is where this idea come about. Then we thought that we would like to also contact trace our people within the building. Just so if let's say any of us has accidentally come into contact of any uh, COVID-19 patient or um, you know, anyone that has had been had close contact to any COVID-19 patient, then we should be able to kind of like give up our alert. So this is kind of like a preventive measure that we would like to see within Manara Maxis itself. So therefore this idea come about. And in a short period of time, I would say um, the idea was conceived back in April, May, and it took us about four months to come up with our own um, contact tracing app that is now being used in Manara Maxis. So how this whole thing works is um, essentially you're having an app and then you're actually carrying a beacon. Each of us actually will be carrying a beacon and then there would also be sensors that are placed within uh, some of the uh, within certain area of the building, like all the meeting rooms, some common areas like uh, megabyte, which is actually our cafeteria, and some of our training rooms, uh, some of our conference room as well. So when when some of the employees come together in this location, then based on the certain setting in the system then we are able to detect the presence and uh, the proximity between uh, the employees and then therefore all this information would get sent to a storage in cloud 
And then with the data that we gather in cloud, then we are able to churn and produce the visualization and reports that uh, is able to ease the PNO to visualize the tracing status as well as the necessary updates. If let's say there is any alerts that is being um, observed, then there would be notifications sent out to um, uh, the, uh, you know, to the person itself. So he or she is informed of then therefore he or she should actually try to do the necessary action next, for example, to quarantine himself or maybe to inform the people that he or she has come into contact to themselves. All right. So, and the, 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 the great thing about this is um, we are in the midst of actually uh, patenting this product and uh, it is being productized and uh, it has actually been uh, productized as part of our SME solution uh, that to be rolled out to our potential Maxis customer. Okay, the next one. So just now I mentioned about the Maxis Cafe. So which is where the, it is the common area that we all get together and have our lunch and you know uh, we chill uh, where you get your coffee. So this project actually started back in uh, February last year as well where prior to the lockdown, we were all actually were churning and uh, we were all actually brainstorming about this idea. So, so this idea actually isn't anything new, but if you have heard of Amazon Go, that is kind of like the similar kind of project that we would want to replicate and make it uh, uh, a reality in our Megabyte in uh, Manara Maxis. Okay, so the idea is you go into Megabyte, you picked up the food or the drinks that you want as when you cruise along and then you would in the end come to the tail, um, you will place the things that you have in your hands and then it would actually recognize you, uh, who you are and it would also recognize that object that you picked up and then it would automatically based on these two things, uh, it would actually deduct the money uh, out of you because uh, each of us would uh, be carrying our, our, our Maxis ID to uh, um, uh, megabyte to purchase things. So the whole experience is without having to actually um, come into contact to anyone, you are able to kind of like self-serve and uh, purchase your stuff and walk away with it. All right. However, this idea was half done. Uh, but what I'm saying is here, I mean, if one day we ever return back to the office, this, this idea would continue. Uh, and what are the possibilities behind all, all this is also immense. For example, with the use of big data and AI, then we are able to also predict the user buying patterns. So for example, if uh, I'm an obese person, then maybe it is able to also kind of like provide, uh, have a better meal suggestion for me. So, and then it would also kind of like ease uh, better management of uh, stock inventory uh, planning as well just so we can prevent unnecessary uh, food waste, all right? And a possible extension to this project also comes, uh, uh, so, so oh, oh, it's, it's also actually uh, go beyond the list that I'm able to list here. But uh, just to give you a few, for example, you know, back then we were also having some, some crazy ideas about having bought that would kind of like, if let's say we are able to present a menu in, the, in an app, that is rolled out to the Maxis employee, then we are able to pick and, and select, kind of like place an order through the app. And then we will have the bot that would actually go up and down of the building and serve us without having to actually go and queue up in Megabyte to purchase what we want. And then you can also kind of like get that kind of apps. Uh, you would also get apps uh, upsold with uh, some healthy snacks based on your, uh, your, you know, your purchasing style. All right. So the possibility is, uh, is, is actually definitely more than all this that I can mention here. And there are also many, many interesting that come out of um, uh, the, the IT team as well. For example, I mean, this IT innovation lab uh, that has been started by a different team, uh, they come up with many, many, uh, this lab, essentially what you're looking at, all these images are within Manara Maxis, yes that tall building that you see next to KLCC. So these are all the labs that we set up and we actually experiment with it. And it is actually in the midst of being productized and rolled out to our um, agricultural uh, base customer, which they have already shown keen interest and we are actually doing it and uh, solutioning it and uh, rolling it out and uh, selling it. 
and of course there are a lot more that uh, you know um, I it, it would probably take me too long to cover within this session. However, there are a few that are, that is worth mentioning. For example, the robotic arms, uh, some uh, for, like we did for the 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 the, the proof of concept, um, and we are perfecting it. And how do we actually monitor it? And these are all going to be used and applied in manufacturing uh, area. And there is also another interesting project that they call uh, we call DuranSense. This DuranSense is actually one of the projects that come out of one um, innovation um, hackathon, uh, IoT hackathon that uh, was coined and uh, kind of like the idea was, uh, this idea was ideated by our own staff and then it was actually brought into the uh, brought to the field and uh, experimented with it and we developed so the whole concept was that you place all the sensors on the durian farm and then uh, you gather all those information just so with all the data that you gather you are able to predict and how do you how do you ensure that the we, we it produces the best yield that uh, uh, you know, based on the data that you're able to gather, for example, the, the rainfall, the soil nutrient, and uh, the humidity, and all, there are many, many, uh, this kind of um, parameters that uh, you are able to fit in, all right? So when we talk about the future, in fact, we are, in fact, already start talking about the now that we are seeing. So whatever that you are seeing, the term on the left-hand side is in fact things that we are already seeing, right? But what you can also think of the future, how do you actually apply all these things on the left to the, everything on the right-hand side that you can, you, 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 can, you, can, you can imagine? 5Gs, cloud, uh, IoT, robotics, blockchain, all these kind of uh, technologies that you can name out there. How do you actually apply all this in all these areas that you can possibly think of? like medical science, how does it help when it comes to uh, surgery with 5Gs, with robotics, um, with uh, cloud, you are now able to perform this uh, 5G powered um, robotic operations, for example, healthcare. And healthcare is also again moving away from being a reactive healthcare than to proactive. How do we do that? Now we're already able to produce um, petabytes of uh, genomic analysis. And therefore we are able to analyze our DNA and know what we should do now to prevent the disease that, you know, we, we are able to identify that we are about to actually get uh, based on our DNA. How do we actually use all this technology to produce green energy um, that we need tomorrow, uh, uh, green as in sustainable? And then how do we actually prevent and not, we are not talking about prevention anymore. Now we are talking about reverse climate change. How can we actually compete against time uh, by using all this technology to reverse our climate just so maybe in five years time, we would no longer be having, we, no one would no longer be talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, all this uh, climate change issue that we are facing today. And manufacturing, so you can you, you can imagine five Gs, IoT, again robotics, all these kind of things that would make um, manufacturing uh, AI powered and being done in the most optimized way. And retailer as well, you can think of it like retailer. How do you want? To, how how do you imagine yourself walking into a retail uh, a retail store tomorrow? Maybe in the future you no longer see anything. All you see is you just have to walk in. Everything is projected right in front of your eyes. And all you have to do is maybe just to wear on the goggles uh, to experience things in front of you without actually having a tangible things anymore. Agricultural is the same. I mean, I've mentioned some of that in, uh, in the earlier slides before. Education, kids no longer now want to look at the screen. Now they have the goggles to experience, you know, uh, gaming as well, for example, and childcare and senior care. How do they actually bring a different experience to senior and childcare these days? Um, a lot, a lot of all these technologies have gone into it and, and in financial and institution as well. So it is really the, 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 the number of combination and permutation that you can make out of 
the technologies that you see on the left hand side to apply into this and many more on the right hand side that I've not mentioned here. It is really up to your imagination. So really the, the sky is the limit here. So when we talk about what we are heading to uh, in the future for Maxis, uh, we are talking about things that have not, it, is, uh, it is already happening and, and it's yet to come. And this is why I think we need graduates like you guys out there to help us bring the future uh, to the reality. Uh, we are no longer looking for people that comes from a telco background. So you can be a mechanical engineer, you can be a, a biotech engineer, you can be a, um, you know, a computer science graduate, and you can be anything, anything that has to do with engineering and science. This is where all the possibilities uh, is going to happen uh, with people talented like you guys out there. So therefore, I would like to just kind of like show you a little bit of how our day, how our, Mac, our office looked like, uh, essentially. So, I mean, there are a lot more, the entire Maxis uh, kind of like have this kind of view. So when you come to Maxis, this is how level eight looks like. And this is some of our fun working space. And it literally is like this on every single floor. All right. I'm not just picking one or two floors to show you, but uh, it is like this. Uh, you will have brainstorming area, you would have uh, open space and you have private rooms for you to take a private call or maybe you need some uh, private uh, discussions, uh, then you can actually just book yourself in. There are some chill area and there are some resting area on each floor. And uh, these are some of the conference, uh, uh, the, 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 the top left, that is the, the living room. And... Um, Oh, that one is the Sunway Pinnacle uh, building. And then um, these are some of the day two. That one is uh, our revamp retail center that you get to see today. All right. So therefore, it wraps up uh, all I have to share with all of you today. Thank you. Over to you, Karina. All right. Thank you so much, Anne, for sharing with us. It is definitely interesting to uh, kind of see about like the, what's the latest trend in technologies, what kind of projects that uh, would be relevant for today's uh, world, right? So before uh, I actually continue on to share about um, opportunities here in Maxis, I would like to just quickly note that if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, you can definitely put it in the uh, chat box and we will try to cover as many questions that we can during the Q&A session later on. Right, uh, I'll just uh, quickly share my screen to uh, share about the um, opportunities here in Mexis. Right, um, right, if you can see my screen. So um, I would like to share a little bit about what kind of opportunities, young talent opportunities we have, especially about our graduate program. So for our graduate program, we actually have a framework called ACE, and it stands for Accelerated, Comprehensive, and Experiential. So in uh, by using this framework, we have a structured and also systematic approach, which enables the graduates later on to actually have an effective learning roadmap. So what I mean by an effective learning roadmap is that we actually want to provide a comprehensive learning experience to the graduates. And if you know, right, uh, during the university days, usually uh, what we learn mostly is only theoretical, um, theoretical knowledge. So very limited hands-on experiences. And that's one of the reasons why some, uh, sometimes internships or other kind of like uh, opportunities you actually should try to uh, be involved in because it will give you like real hands-on experiences. So here uh, for our graduate program, we want to have that comprehensive learning experience. We want to provide both the um, theoretical uh, training uh, by training, providing the training, and we also want to involve you in uh, projects, hands-on projects. So if you are uh, involved in this comprehensive experience, you will, you will learn while uh, being in the uh, program, but also you will build your skill sets that will be relevant for 
uh, for your work, for your project that you are doing, right? And uh, we have a specialization focus. And what I mean is that uh, we have several graduate programs uh, in their own specific domain. So if you see here, we actually just launched two graduate programs in February 2021. So uh, we just launched Enterprise and also HR. But, uh, and it will close soon actually. So, uh, but don't worry, uh, we actually have another graduate programs which I want to share with you. So we have six graduate programs actually launched this year. We've just launched the HR and Enterprise uh, program, but we will launch another four graduate programs uh, at the end of April this year. So we have SNS graduate program and it stands for sales and service. And then we have finance, we have tech, and also we have consumer business. So all these uh, other four graduate programs, it will launch uh, at the end of April 2021. So stay tuned for uh, the launch of the next batch of graduate programs. And I'll uh, go quickly later on for this uh, scholarship and internship that I kind of like want to share more about what's the experience like if you participate in our graduate program. So this is a little framework of a few. So our graduate program, it will be a one year long uh, program. So there are three main stages uh, for the one year long program. So first is the residential stage. So a uh, residential stage, uh, we, in this stage, we, uh, we want to provide you kind of like a support to help you transitioning actually. So we realized that um, the learning environment in university and also the uh, work environment in the, um, usually in organization, it's a little bit different. And sometimes some people might find it hard to adjust. And I just want to quickly note that it's perfectly normal. It's perfectly okay because both are just different, right? So people might have a dif like difficult time to actually adjust to it. So this residential stage, we provide to help you adjust to it and we support you in adjusting, right? So what you will go through for this residential stage is uh, you'll go through OB. So OB stands for onboarding. And then you will also be provided a training. And then you will also go to our retail center and also contact center. And why we want you to actually go to our retail center and contact center, it's because uh, one of our culture pillar is actually customer first. So we realize the importance and uh, the importance of customers for Maxis. And the best way, the best place to actually know and firsthand why customers are important is definitely our retail center and also contact center. So uh, you will have the experience uh, to, you know, onboarding, training, retail center, and also contact center in the residential stage. After uh, you've completed the residential stage, you will actually be, um, you will go to either one of the track. Uh, uh, although for now we couldn't really uh, disclose the tracks, but uh, I will share a little bit about what exposures that you will get if you uh, participate in the tech graduate program, especially. So during the starting from the rotation stage, you will actually have an exposure to uh, the ones that I actually mentioned. You know, IoT, uh, digital development, uh, AI, machine learning, big data. So if you uh, participate in this one year long program, you will actually have those those kind of exposures, right? So you go to the rotation and we understand some uh, for tech pro projects, usually it will have a uh, longer, um, it will require longer time to actually have successful projects. So we uh, we will have you to uh, kind of like be attached to projects uh, for around six months, right? For this rotation stage. And then after that rotation stage, we will have you to go to our immersion stage where you will go for a final rotation. And uh, this final rotation, you will have more in-depth uh, learning experience. And like I've mentioned before, not only we will provide you training, but we will also um, have you involved in our projects and we call it action learning projects, ALP. And the projects, not only we will have it for technical related projects, but uh, we can also involve you to uh, other projects that will impact you know, Maxis as a whole, or even if you are passionate about bringing changes through technology to the society, you can also be involved in our CSR projects, right? So 
this is a little bit of framework about our tech grid program. But if you want to uh, know more about our like other grid program, for example, sales and service finance, we will. Uh, the, it's going to be uh, quite similar. So the main difference would uh, only be in this uh, rotation stage where they will go to multiple rotations, right? And definitely the track is in their specific domain. Right, uh, that's a little bit about the graduate programs, right? So I also want to touch on uh, other two young talent opportunities that we have here in Mexico. So um, scholarships, we have scholarship. Uh, it might not be so relevant for uh, you all, but uh, in case you know you have cousins, you have a friends, families that want to, uh, that are still in um, university and want to uh, have scholarships. We do have scholarships. Uh, we have three branches of it. We have Maxis Tech Scholarship. We have Maxis Women in Tech Scholarship, and we also have Maxis Young Leaders Scholarship. And we usually um, open the uh, application period at around. Um, definitely in the second half of the year, but uh, you can always stay tuned to our social media to find uh, like more um, announcements later on. And another, aside from this, uh, graduate programs and also scholarships, we also have internship programs. So for internships, we do have uh, both technical roles and also non-technical roles. And for um, technical roles, uh, we have uh, availabilities in an um, area of um, at network, uh, cybersecurity, IoT, and um, advanced analytics. So we have a, a lot of uh, technical internship roles that you can definitely check out. Uh, after this, you can uh, definitely um, put the link in the chat box so you can actually just click on the link and see what kind of like, roles that we have for uh, young talent opportunities. And that's uh, about technical roles, right? So we do have non-technical roles as well. Well, we do have uh, roles in, uh, you know, HR field. We do have in uh, consumer marketing. We do have in digital marketing, and uh, we do have in um, e-commerce as well. So uh, we do have a lot uh, of non-technical roles as well. So if you don't come from, you know, engineering uh, or like computer science background, uh, you can definitely still apply for internship opportunities in Nexus. Right, uh, and this is just to touch on what I've mentioned before. This is the current available positions that we have. Uh, for the graduate program, we have HR and Enterprise already launched. And application period actually will close soon, in 31st of March. So uh, do drop your application. And then uh, aside from the uh, graduate program, we also have the internship program, uh, the one that I've mentioned, right? Uh, this is just to name a few. Uh, we have e-commerce digital marketing, and we have employer branding, retail channel productivity. It is a little bit of uh, non-technical roles, but we do have a lot of uh, other technical roles as well. And you can definitely check out in our career page. Maybe someone from Nexus can uh, help to uh, put the links in the chat box so you can just click on it and see for yourself. Right? So, right. I'll just share a little bit about our recruitment process. You must be wondering if, you know, you... Uh, participate in our uh, young talent opportunities, you know, graduate programs, scholarships, and uh, in, in, even internships, what uh, recruitment process that you need to go through, how many stages that you need to go through, right? So for this one, I just project for graduate programs. So there will be four stages for graduate programs, but for internships, it will be somehow similar. So uh, for graduate programs, four stages you need to go through. First, you just need to apply uh, via Workday so workday, uh, we use a workday to help uh, ease the um, submission of your application. So in workday, when you apply, you just need to fill out your information and then you know submit your CV, administrative stuff. Uh, you, you know basically uh, send your application and your profile to us, and then after that, after you apply, then um, you will go to the next process of digital interview, and it will be via higher view. So this digital interview, some people might find it a little bit awkward because it's actually a kind of a one-way digital interview. So you need to record yourself answering the questions that uh, we have for the interview, right? But uh, once you get a hang of it, I think you'll definitely be able to, uh, you know, perform and answer the questions that we ask. And after that, the next process is uh, assessment day. So this assessment day, it will be a one-day uh one uh, day of assessment. 
there will be various activities for the assessment days and definitely uh, for now we couldn't really disclose it, but it will be to assess uh, your, uh, you know, uh, basically your skills your uh, and also the requirements as well. And it will be a little bit different uh, between the uh, different graduate programs as well. So yep, after the assessment day, uh, the next process would be an interview and this will be a final interview. It will be either a virtual one, uh, I think in, in today's uh, uh, setting, right? Uh, because of the COVID, uh, you know, MCO, CMCO, I think virtual is definitely the um, one, uh, the way that we choose right now. So uh, most probably it will be still a virtual interview. So, and this interview, it will be a final one. So after this uh, final interview, then that's it. That's basically the uh, whole recruitment process. If you are shortlisted for the entire process, then you uh, get the job offer, right? So that's basically for graduate programs, but for internships, it, it will be slightly simpler. You won't go through the assessment day. You just go through, you know, application via work day, digital interview via higher fee, and then you go to a final interview. So that's for internships, right? And that's about the recruitment journey. journey. So uh, I do want to invite you to connect with us online through our social media platforms. And uh, most of the, you know, we, we uh, uploaded uh, interesting stories. We uploaded, you know, uh, for example, if we open new graduate programs, we will definitely upload it uh, and share it using our uh, social media platforms. So mainly we use LinkedIn. You can just quickly search for Maxis and uh, you'll definitely get uh, it. You can uh, see what posts that we have about you know, uh, our company. And then on Instagram, we are also there we, uh, with the username is live at Maxis. So it's slightly different. So for LinkedIn, it's just Maxis, but for Instagram, it's live at Maxis. So if you want to, um, you know, uh, read and also know more interesting stories, then uh, our social media platform is definitely one way to go. Right, so that's actually a little bit about us uh, from Maxis. So after this, uh, so before we move on to the next session, right, I just hope that uh, uh, you'll get a like, better understanding about what we shared today. So, uh, and if you want to know more, we will go to uh, Q&A session after this. So uh, do drop your questions in the um, chat box uh, that you see on your screen, right? So we'll just go to the um, Q&A session. So I do have a, uh, see several questions. So probably uh, I'll just ask uh, Anne first uh, for the first question. So, and I have a question here. And the question is, which aspects of your job would you say you find most challenging? ranging from interpersonal relation with your team to many of the technical subjects that you've, dis that you've discussed today. All right, thank you, Karina. Um, a lot of challenges working in Maxis, but they are all very exciting challenges, I must say. So interpersonal relationship is, um, there are so many things happen in Maxis every single day. Um, one of the key challenges is for me to find time to talk to my manager and to talk to my team members because uh, there are just so many things going on. So I would say in a, in a good way, my, my manager has been uh, very trusting uh, in the sense that he leave us actually up, he, he leave it up to me to make many de decisions. Um, he always tell me one thing, he said, and in, if I do not come to you, that means it's all good. Uh, I would only come to you if something is wrong. Right. So with that in mind, then I know this is the kind of uh, agreement that we, 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 we set in place. So, so as long as he is not actually knocking on my door, then I know that's all fine. It's all good. Right. And then how do I do that with my team then? Because I'm now managing a team of 11 and it's growing. And I have about seven openings right now in my, in my team to hire. So how do I imagine when my team has grown into a, a, a team of 18 people? How do I do that? Uh, Honestly, I do not know, but all I do know is uh, I would definitely have the necessary uh, pit stop session. So pit stop is a way that we actually kind of like have it in a quarterly basis that I would definitely sit down and talk to my teammate. 
So therefore, that is kind of like a designation, uh, sorry, a dedicated time that actually I allocated for my team it just so they can talk about anything ranging from their work to their personal thing if they feel comfortable talking with me. And if not, then they can reach out to me in any forms that they are able to get hold of me. Uh, it can be WhatsApp, it can be Slack, it can be email, uh, it can be any form. Uh, we have so many ways of communicating. Um, so therefore, I kind of like open it up to them. But I also kind of like also establish uh, the kind of understanding of, you know, um, it's okay if let's say when I message you and if you do not respond and I understand outside of work hour, okay? Because uh, I, do, I do understand my teammates, some of them, they actually work around the clock and sometimes when they had late night deployment, therefore in the morning, they need to actually make up their sleep. Uh, therefore, they won't be able to respond to me immediately. All right. So, but as long as uh, I'm informed of, so the message will be left and it will be picked up by me. So this is a kind of, uh, you know, work relationship that we establish just so we keep each other informed. So that is the challenging part I'm talking about. I mean, uh, sometimes it can be real time. Sometimes it cannot be real time. Then we actually find a way, uh, you know, uh, finding way to actually communicate. Um, and to technical subject, so many, because uh, essentially what I've touched on, uh, big data, AI, uh, IoT, those are actually not in my uh, radar. It's in fact, it's under the entire IT. So things that are un under my radar are purely digital. And even within digital, there are apps and there are web, there are actually, um, uh, you know, services level like APIs. So my area, uh, the, the, the area that within my, my radar is purely on web. So when we talk about web, there are so many things happening. So the kind of stack of technology that we use, uh, the solution. So we are moving away from everything from on-prem to cloud. So when we move away from cloud, uh, what are the challenges that we have in place? What are the processes uh, that we need to change and you need to agree upon? And when we talk about deployment, so what are the time frame that we're talking about would provide minimal impact to the customer that might be actually navigating our website at that hour? And what could be the possible impact then if something goes really wrong, what should we actually do about it? So there were all these kind of challenges and solutioning technical, uh, uh, technical solution uh, subject, things like cloud, even cloud itself, there are so many things. Um, there are so many services. And on top of those services, you also need to talk about uh, you know, uh, the operations of it and the security aspect of it, and as well as uh, the escalation, uh, production issue escalation. So these are all the day-to-day -day technical challenges that I am dealing with day in, day out. I hope that answered the question. Definitely on point, right? Uh, I think just to add on, right, during this, uh, you know, tough times, uh, we, communication has uh, been a very, like, key points that we need to take note of right and it's definitely important to uh you know sometimes check up on one another in the team right all right uh i'll move to the next question uh, it's also for you and so uh you mentioned how the technologies that we mentioned can be applied to so many different fields what is your personal favorite application of the technologies that you mentioned um, the favorite application of technology, man. Actually, I love many things. I mean, initially, I thought I was going to be working in digital. And when I joined Maxis, and then I realized that it is more than digital, okay? Uh, this is where I come into, uh, uh, this is where actually I come to learn about the possibilities that IoT is opening up. And the possibility of big data is opening up, you know, back in my era, when I study computer science, all I'm doing, all I was doing and all I'm doing right now is purely digital stuff. But uh, uh, I remember the first year when I joined Maxis, um, I, I got inspired by one of the teammates. Uh, he is so hands-on with IoT stuff. And the very first thing that I told him that, hey, can you teach me how to actually, you know, how to create a auto food dispenser for my rabbit? Okay, because every day I have to go and feed. I have a pet, I have a rabbit. So he was actually trying to show me, but uh, somehow halfway through, because, you know, uh, 
project actually uh, got in the way and then we kind of like sidetrack that a little bit and things get you know more and more uh, workload is kind of like piling up so therefore and then we we, we, we didn't actually it, it was actually half done so when he showed me what is possible with uh, digital and outside digital then it start get me thinking my idea runs wild okay uh, and then another interesting thing also is when I understand about when I start looking about other teams like big data team do, how do you actually do this data? And it gets, it got me thinking that the possibility is so endless. For example, like for example, network, how do you make the most of the network data to provide the best coverage for our, our customer? So, and, and how do you actually uh, make sure that the user uh, is uh, getting so the best product that they need? So you are not simply, so what we, are, what we are talking about is by looking at how, what are the things that we buy, uh, the kind of plan that we have, uh, you know, then you are able to predict what, what, what are the likelihood of this our customer is going to take up this offer that we are going to personalize for them. So we are talking about personalizing um, uh, the, the offer for that specific customer. So now you as a consumer, you no longer think that this person is trying to sell me things that I do not need. Then whatever that you get sold off is, uh, is something that is relevant to you. So this is now the part we are living in the, in the era of the power of the data where data actually makes, uh, we, we really make the most of the data to help us actually uh, make that decision. And then therefore it should in turn also benefit us as consumer. Okay, so I would say, uh, I'm still a big fan of IoT, but uh, I do think that I am also getting very, very interested to understand how big data work as well. Uh, there are still so many unexplored territory for me, and I feel like you guys, and this is your future, I, I, I feel like it will be my future as well, maybe, but I feel like your time would be, you know, so different, so different. So, uh, IoT uh, is what I like, okay, personally. If I'm not working today, I'm going to turn my whole house into a smart home. So this is what I would like to do if, if I have the time. No worries, the sky is the limit, right? And so- Correct, correct. Yeah, technologies yes. will just keep, you know, uh, yes. keep coming up. Yes. Right, so um, I'll move on to the um, third question. So uh, for the third question, I actually like to uh, invite Sunita. So Sunita is the head of uh, the Young Talent team here in Nexus, and um, she, she is from the HR department, right? So um, third question would be, uh, so Sunita, uh, someone asked whether she can, he or he can join other graduate programs, which has little to do with the course that he or she is taking. For example, sales program, uh, she wants to uh, join a sales program, even though of, uh, her background is in business or finance. All right, thanks, Karina. Uh, good morning, everyone, for those in, in UK, and uh, good evening to those, you know, uh, tuning in from KL. Um, so I just go right to the questions, right? So just uh, in the mindful of time. So the answer to that question is yes, right? So I think it, it really is important for you to decide what you are passionate or you're interested in. Right. So having said that, this is applicable for the non-technical track, of course, because if it's a technical track, then there are certain uh, requirements uh, that you need to fulfill before you are eligible. But if you mention sales program, right, and this is a very interesting program because sales is not something you can learn, really. It is really driven by your innate interests, your personality, your drive, right? So whether you're from the marketing background, you're from the business background or any background, but if you have that innate ability, you like sales, you like meeting people, you are driven by targets, um, you know, goals, then I think this would be the, a great uh, program for you to, to kickstart kick your career in. Okay, thanks, Anita. I do have another question for you, actually. Um, next question is, what are the traits that you look for when shortlisting talents for the graduate programs? Is there a minimum academic requirement? 
Okay, so this is always the question that we get, right? Uh, academic uh, requirement. So um, I think if you are referring to the CGPA or a standard academic qualification requirement, then uh, for the graduate programs, there is an indication uh, of such, uh, but it, it is not the only determining factor when we evaluate candidates, right? It is just a... Uh, uh, you know, a preliminary a screening or criteria that we put in all our advertisements, especially for the graduate programs. But as I think Karina mentioned earlier, right, there are a few stages, uh, workday, there's the higher view and so on. So we will look at other criteria as well, uh, you know, of your application, what you put in the CV, uh, what exposure, you know, whether it's internship, or any special projects, volunteering uh, projects that you've been involved, any additional courses that you've taken. So all of this will also be looked at. And you know, that's why this is very important to include in your CV. Okay, okay. thank you, Smita. All right, so um, I just have one last question uh, and to be mindful of the time, right? So uh, the last question I'd like to direct it to both Anne and Smita. So the question is, do you have any advice for SPEM students who don't necessarily have an IT background to break into the uh, tech world at university? For example, like big data, AI, so on. Um, and you want to go first or I go first? Uh, uh, and, and you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, the question again. All right, the question again is, do you have any advice for SPEM students who don't necessarily have an IT background to break into the tech uh, while at university? Yes, we do look into such a uh, possibility, but however, I mean, we, we encourage people from actually very different background and we have teammates actually uh, that are coming from non-STEM background, okay? And they manage to actually step foot into technology. However, um, we, we also need you to show us what have you actually done to, to get yourself skilled, uh, have the basic skill in technology as well. So it could be self-taught, but it doesn't really matter. So we want to see the initiative coming from you. What have you done actually to kind of like upskill yourself just so you are ready to step foot into this uh, tech world? Uh, because uh, it, the, everything happens very fast here in Maxis and um, we need you to do the homework. Okay, and when you show up for the interview, if you're able to demonstrate that to convince us, we would definitely consider. So we have had people in the past and still right now we have teammates that are not coming from STEM background that are able to step foot into um, uh, our team digital. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't agree uh, more with Anne. So I think what's important is what you can bring or what you can offer. And I think attitude and your pride, how resourceful are you and how well you have prepared in the past, right? Taking up extra courses or anything that you have done to convince us that, you know, this is where your passion lies. I think that's very, very important. Okay, thank you for both the answer and Antonita. Right, meanwhile, uh, someone from Maxis has already sent a link, a Slido link in the chat box. So we would like to uh, ask for your feedbacks for today's, se today's session. So we'd really appreciate if you could, uh, you know, give a few feedbacks in both of those links. Right, and meanwhile, while uh, we wait for you to um, give your feedback, uh, probably we can have one last question. So uh, let's see what's the question. Maybe uh, both Sunita and also uh, Anne can also um, give their inputs. What soft skills does a company like Access prioritize? Maybe something that um, very much relevant for you know today's technology world. Sunita, you want to go? Sure, sure. Okay. Um, all right. So I'll, I'll kick this off first. So I think when it comes to soft skills, it's something that's also, you know, we always get this question, um, you know, and we cannot stress enough. I think for Maxis specifically, what we look for is attitude. Right. So attitude is actually one of the most important thing. We, we look for someone with a growth mindset, 
um, a collaborative nature, uh, strong and coupled with strong interpersonal and communication skills and loves to collaborate. I think these are skills that, you know, um, you don't have to have experience, a work experience to develop these skills. It comes naturally um, uh, to you as a person, as an individual, and also those kind of um, additional projects or involvement in campus would help shape and hone the skills further. So this would be uh, some of the key um, soft skills that we look for, um, at least for the graduate programs or the young talent programs uh, in general. Yes, I couldn't agree more as well uh, with what Sunita has said. I think it's the attitude that we are really looking for as well. I mean, in, um, you know, it is, I would say, Maxis is, fast paced in many ways and uh, you need to make decision quick and then you'll be actually put under test and under crunch time to get things out in the quickest manner and how do you deal with that um, are you composed are you stressing out I mean are you actually helping the team to achieve the, the common goal that everyone is moving towards uh, all this matter so yes uh, technical skill essential but uh, a good soft skill would actually help you propel further. Okay, thank you both Anne and Sunita. Maybe just to add on a little bit, uh, because I do see that sometimes fresh graduates or even university students, um, they kind of struggle with uh, interpersonal skills, for example, communication skills. Um, the questions that we usually get sometimes is, you know, if we are an introvert, then how can we actually have an excellent communication skill, right? So. Um, I would just want to highlight that uh, being an introvert, it doesn't mean that your communication skills basically suck, right? So uh, your it, you can definitely improve on your communication skills if you, you know, expose yourself to a lot of different, uh, like if, if, we, if I could say like, probably try to be a, an MC in a webinar, right? So that will help you to actually, you know, hone those soft skills actually, right? Yes. Uh, Okay, so um, we are actually two minutes before 6 p.m., right? So uh, I think we just want to wrap up the session today. Uh, we are, uh, you know, apologies if we don't get to answer your questions. We do see a lot of other questions as well, but you can definitely put your questions in the, uh, you know, public chat because we have the two uh, day carry fairs, right? So you can uh, put your questions there and we'll try to get back to you and answer the questions that we have, right? Uh, on, on the last note, I'd like to uh, thank you all for being here together with us today. And I hope, you know, this uh, session that we have today, it brings light to you and gives you a little taste of uh, the, basically the technology world and also about Maxis in general, right? So um, thank you all for being here today and uh, I'll see you soon in the next events that we have. Thank you. So thank you so much. Hi guys, I'm Farisha from Team Graduan and I'm proud to tell you that the Virtual Malaysian Career Fair is back this 26 to 28 March. Get ready to meet and interact with leading Malaysian employers from the comfort of your home. Here's how you can register to the Malaysian Career Fair and begin the hunt for your dream job. 
First of all, visit the malaysiancareerfair.co.uk and click Register Now on the top right corner. Fill in the necessary details. The red asterisk indicate compulsory fields. And this includes your resume. Let us know your top 6 preferred employers and click Confirm. Leading Malaysian employers can now view your resume and interact with you. Easy, wasn't it? You can even register through the Graduan app. Here's how. Just download the Graduan app on the Play Store or App Store. Click on the Events tab and click the Malaysian Career Fair. Fill in the details required. Once done, verify your email and complete the Graduan profile. Employees can't see your account if you don't complete your profile. It's that simple. Get online this 26 to 28 March to meet leading Malaysian employers. Change your life to meaningful careers today.